bad data is present in almost every data set that comes from measurements, physical measurements. Now, we have bad data with regression. We want to be able to remove those data points if possible, such as outliers. But if we can't remove them, what can we do in terms of the objective function of our regression to minimize the effect of outliers? Now, squared errors, it amplifies that outlier and perhaps shifts the whole curve up just due to that squared error component from that one measurement. But we want to, in this case, use an L1 norm to minimize the effect of that single outlier. So we're going to go ahead and just like that tulip right there, that red one, maybe we can't identify or maybe we can't remove it from our data set. What can we do with the objective function? We're going to determine the kinetic constants of KF forward and KB backward. This is a reversible reaction with A plus 2B goes to C plus D in a batch reactor. Now, we have this first rate equation that describes the concentration of C. And we have this differential equation with D concentration DT. Now, laboratory technicians have collected some data to help us estimate these K forward and K backward constants. Here we have our data collected at these times in minutes. And we can see in this data set, we have our one outlier right here. And we could easily remove that, okay? But in this case, let's just say we don't remove it. How can we modify our objective function to minimize the effect of that outlier? So don't remove the outlier or change this value. Go ahead and use it as is. And we have initial concentration of A and B listed there. There's no C or D at the start, but they form when the reactants are mixed together. Now, we see the differential equations that describe the dynamics. We have the concentration of A, the concentration of B, and the concentration of D. And those are related to the time derivative of concentration of C. Those are four ODEs, or differential equations. Now we want to determine the best kinetic constants that fit that and plot each species concentration. We'll explain the objective function, perform the parameter estimation, whether an L1 norm or squared error objective is preferable for this problem. All right, and by default, the number of nodes is three in APM and is equal to two in Gecko. So I recommend changing that to get a little bit more accurate. And we're going to use orthogonal collocation on finite elements. Okay, those number of nodes are going to be increased. In this case, it's going to do it for us within Gecko. All right, I'm going to write out this problem now. Here's our first one, the time array. And we're just going to, as it goes, I'll go ahead and erase some of this, these values here. And we'll just go ahead and highlight the areas that we're working on as, as we go. So there's our time, and here's our concentration. We'll just type in all of those values. Okay, and don't forget to just leave the outlier there. Don't remove that one from the list. Okay, I'll just go ahead and finish typing these out. There's 5.32. All right, now we'll create our gecko model, and we'll say remote equals true. If you don't want to solve with an internet connection, set that to false. Here we have our k forward. We'll give it an initial guess and lower and upper bound values. And then also k backward as well. We'll have a lower bound and upper bound value there. We'll turn the status on for those, and that makes it so the solver can adjust them. As FEs, there's only one value of those for the total time horizon. Here's our concentration of A and B with those initial values that we had, and then D, and then concentration of C as well. Now C is gonna be a CV, a controlled variable, because we have a measurement for it and we'll turn its feedback status on. Now I'm gonna type out the equations here for our differential equations. And we can see concentration of C, I did that one first. And then the other differential equations are just functions of the derivative of concentration of C. All right, now we'll go ahead and turn on gecko mode to estimation. And we already have our time defined. We're gonna set that to I mode five. So that is a dynamic estimation mode and EV type is one. And if we set it to two instead, that's gonna be a sum of squared errors. 
and one is going to be the sum of absolute error. Okay, not absoluted. Okay, absolute error. We'll solve it. I have display equals false, but if you have trouble solving it, set that to true to look at the solver output. Now we're going to generate this plot, and I'll just show this on the right just as we generate it. We have our time and concentration of A and B, and I'll put those on the top subplot. And we'll just go ahead and label those with our Y label, that's our concentration. And there we can see the time evolution. We initially mix those, and you can see them react to form C, and they'll also form D as well. Now in the bottom subplot, this is where we put in our measurements, and we can see the outlier here, and how it's, the solution is not influenced by that outlier because of the L1 norm. So it's like a consensus. We're doing a regression on a consensus of most of the points and ignore the ones that are outliers. All right, so it's like a sum of absolute values, but it doesn't use non-continuous uh, gradients there. It uses a different form that's, talk, that's uh, discussed in the course website. It allows continuous first and second derivatives. There we're going to put out our KF and KB. Let's go to the dynamic optimization course, and I'm going to go to practice midterm three. This is the third problem in that midterm, and there are solution videos for each of these. There you can see the midterm exam. All right, and problem number three is in this PDF that we're showing. And then if you want to go to the GitHub link there, it also has the Jupyter Notebook as the source. All right, and you can go down to problem number three. You need to download this notebook and then open it up in your own environment. All right, and the final option is just to go to Google Colab. So this will run through your web browser and you can run the Jupyter Notebook here. It'll load, if you do this, just go ahead and insert a code cell and pip install gecko. So you need that to be able to run the gecko model and the gecko estimation. NumPy is already installed, it'll just check the version there. Okay, so after Gecko finishes installing, if you had to do that in your own Jupyter Notebook, you may need to restart the kernel. Then Jupyter Notebook, you don't have to restart the kernel. Okay, I'm gonna run this third problem with the outlier in there. And you can see, at the very end, we have the plot that we described. Okay, so that is uh, the problem. The dynamic optimization course um, has many other tutorials there, and I'll just go back here. If you want to get the source code just from the website, I'll show you the link here. And there's a button that you can use to expand that and see the solution for problem number three. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial.